coming up on today's episode of the Money Pants Superpower Hour. If you had to explain to someone else what manipulation is, what would you say? What exactly is manipulation? For example, when you offer your child or teen a reward for doing something that you want, are you being manipulative? Or when you attach consequences for bad behavior, is that manipulation? Today, we're going to define what exactly qualifies as manipulation. We're then going to show why money pants naturally helps families avoid manipulation and hopefully even give some tools on how to detect it and avoid it altogether. All this and more, but first, the joke of the day. A policeman pulls a farmer over for speeding and proceeds to write him a ticket. The farmer notices some flies buzzing around, annoying the officer. The policeman is shooing flies more than he's writing. The farmer says, Ugh, I see you're being bothered by those circle flies. The policeman says, if that's what you call them, yeah, they're somewhat annoying. The farmer says, yeah, well, we call them that because we see them circling around the rear ends of horses. The policeman says, uh, excuse me, did you just call me a horse's rear end? The farmer quickly says, oh no, sir, officer. I have way too much respect for those who serve in law enforcement to ever say such a thing. But it sure is hard to fool those circle flies. Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Money Pants Superpower Hour. We are your hosts, Hannah and Fontaine Judd, and we're the proud parents of eight sons and seven daughters, ranging in age from newborn to college student. We're both BYU graduates and the creators of Money Pants. Head on over to Captain Money Pants to learn more about what we do and what we're all about. We believe every person on this planet has been given at least one superpower to help them accomplish their unique mission in life. But the only way to unlock those superpowers is through work ethic. That's when greatness happens. And that's where Money Pants comes in. Money Pants is the complete tool set for cultivating work ethic in all aspects of a person's life. And today's topic is manipulation. And one of, it wasn't that long ago, we read a mom blog who wrote that said, directly said that using rewards was a form of manipulation. Yeah, that, that if you rewarded your kids for good behavior, you were manipulating your child. And it was therefore wrong to be rewarding them. So we were like, okay. How, how do you define manipulation? That, that's kind yeah, of a funny... Yeah, that, that was the next question so, is, well, what does she think manipulation is? So we actually asked a bunch of people on the street, and here are some answers that we got. What is manipulation? I don't know. Using words to take advantage of someone? Manipulation is um, when you play with people's emotions to get them to do what you want. Uh, manipulation is when you prey upon the emotions and you have an, an advantage to do so. So you prey upon somebody's emotions or somebody's weakness to gain an advantage for yourself and you already probably are in a position of power to do so. Well, I can think of people. <laughs> My kids manipulate and me I every day. Say, we have kids. It's when you try to twist people's emotions to get what you want. Using actions to take advantage of people. Uh, manipulation, uh, getting somebody to do what you want them to do, guiding them down the path you want them to kind of say or do themselves, uh, or for yourself, but uh, put it, put, you know, get somebody to do it the way you think, just by things they say. It's the gaslighting and the, you're, I'm right, you're wrong, and this is how we're gonna change this, and you're, you're always wrong, but I'm always right kind of thing. Uh, putting someone's thought, thoughts towards you to make you think differently. Trying to make something happen. You have a certain agenda and you're trying to make it happen. Forcing a yes answer out of you when it's not really there. So getting around your consent by badgering you until you say yes. You can use the manipulation positively or negatively. Mm -hmm. Like teachers manipulate the class to do what they want to help them learn. So we consider that a good thing. Children can manipulate parents and then significant others can manipulate you. Religion man manipulates you. A lot of times you're forced to think that what you think is wrong or your no answer is wrong. Making someone do something you want. So would, would it be a good thing or a bad thing? It's absolutely a necessary thing. Really, it's really the cornerstone, I think, of, of communication. Man, it can be a bad thing, very much so. Bad. Why? Because it makes the other person feel like they're crazy. 
things with her, she'll just keep saying please, 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 please until you're just done with hearing the please. You can't beat them in public, so you have to give in. <laughs> It depends what they're manipulating you about and if their intention is good or their, so the intention behind it. I've been manipulated all my life. I grew up feeling like a horrible person and I'm still fighting with that today. Thank you. You're welcome. What is the podcast that we can oh, hear this? It's called Money Pants. That's what we want to talk about today. I actually want to come up with, Hannah, I want to come up with a working definition of manipulation, how to spot it. Uh, what to do when it does show up, how to avoid doing it in your own life, but also to how to avoid being manipulated. Yeah, so because- by, by the end of this podcast, we're hoping that anybody listening to it will have a very clear idea of what manipulation is. And so they, you won't be manipulated, but also you won't manipulate others. Because right. if you know what it is, it helps you... Av- it helps you avoid that. When yeah. I... Um, well, hopefully we'll give re- good reasons why not to manipulate too. Yeah. Like... I actually, the material that we're going to kind of go over today, I took a course on assertiveness and it was a really good course and there's so much information. I I couldn't, we couldn't cover it in this podcast, but it's a whole book. It's a whole book. And it was fantastic because that's where I I didn't realize that I manipulated all the time, that that was a, a uh, my kind of my go-to. Okay, and I think everybody does, at least until you start defining it. I think everybody does. Yeah, well, because I didn't have it defined and I didn't know what it was. Mm. I didn't know, oh no, not to do this. I won't, because, you know what, like, let me, let me back up. I don't think of, everybody manipulates, but I think a lot of people do and don't realize it. Yeah, if you're in the habit of doing it or that's just how your family communicates or... Yeah. Uh, if that's the norm, if that's how would the you know? norm, you're like, that's how you communicate. That's what you do. And you don't even realize, no, that's manipulation. That's that's well, not a healthy form of communication. But you don't know what to replace it with. But uh, you know right. that you kind of feel like a little kid or you feel like a weenie. You, you just don't <laughs> feel, you don't feel, you know that your communication's a little off, but you don't know how to fix it. And so, but if you have the definitions down, it helps you have more confidence in your communication. But well, well, okay, so right off the bat, though, I, I think we can just two quick examples of manipulation, maybe. Where well, there's the one where there's the 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 gym teacher. And this actually happened to me in sixth grade, where the teacher she didn't want to clean up the gum. That was her and, job. Yeah, she had to keep the courts clean. And so we would get punished if we were caught with bubble gum in the mouth. So Mm -hmm. we'd be doing our morning warm-ups, and she'd go around trying to catch anybody who had gum in their mouth. Mm. And, you know, she'd find someone, she'd say, open your mouth. But what they would do is they would swallow the gum right before they opened their mouths. And so she could never catch anyone. And so she got frustrated. So then she told everybody the story. She realized that that's what they were doing. She's like, if you swallow that bubble gum, bubble gum does not digest it doesn't break apart it will just build up in your stomach and 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 she described all these medical problems that would happen as as globs of gum built up and built up in your stomach and it was completely fabricated that's not true gum that's not digested it goes right on out but she did that in order to manipulate the kids into not swallowing the gum so she could catch them and and um, punish them. Yeah. And that's a, I think it's a pretty clear and easy way of defining, okay, I'll, I can recognize, oh, that's manipulation. But then there was the other time where we had a family member and we were talking to them and we were trying to get them to do something that was going to help them. And they didn't believe that they were able to get the help. And they were in a bad state. And we're like, hey, look, God will open doors. God will provide a way. And this individual, this family member turned to us and said, That is so manipulative. That is so manipulative. And from this family member's perspective, maybe it, it maybe it, it was seemed like a it. Manipulative tactic. But it, that but it in reality it wasn't. And we're gonna explain why. So okay. Well I, I guess that's a good segue because <clears throat> I want, uh, and we're going to break this down. So first off, Hannah, we're going to talk about the four methods, the four basic methods of communication. And this applies to everybody. No matter how you communicate, you're going to, you're going to be using one of these four methods. 
And then from there, we're going to apply those methods to just kind of give a couple of examples of w different scenarios in which each one of these four, we're going to demonstrate each one of these four different methods of communication. And then after that, we're going to talk about how this applies to money pants. And when you're using money pants and because... And is it manipulative? Yeah. It, w are those claims true that if you're rewarding your kids, it's manipulation? And hopefully we're we'll gonna, have a, a really good definition too. Yeah. Yeah. So by then we'll be able to weigh and judge whether whether it is or isn't. Okay. We'll have criteria to judge off of. So here we go. Let's just start off with our four methods of communication. Four, four ways of getting what you want. And here they are. Number one... You can be passive. Number two, you can be aggressive. Number three, you can be manipulative. This is also known as passive aggressive. And number four, you can be assertive. Those, those are the four basic methods of communication. And let's just kind of talk about those. First is passive. Hannah, this is where you, <laughs> you don't communicate. You hope other people can read your mind. Life just kind of happens to you. You play, you play the martyr. You're a doormat. You don't express yourself. And there are all of these unspoken expectations. And this is a very frustrating method of communication where you just kind of almost like... You, you hope you that hope. other people will, will read your mind, but you never express yourself. You never get what you want because you never vocalize it. You never express it. You never speak up. Um, I, I envision a, a teenage girl with glasses and goofy hair sitting in the corner at the dance, hoping that someone will see her and recognize her and come talk to her. But she never takes any effort to talk to anybody or express that she wants to dance. Like that, that's, a, that's, the, that's the image that comes to my mind is, or, or this nerdy little kid who really wants to ask a certain girl out, but just hopes maybe someday that it'll happen, but never acts on it. And it's just, it's just kind of this ethereal, well, I hope someone knows what I want. And it's very ineffective. That's not an effective method of communication. Yeah, that's, it's, it's guaranteed frustration. Mm -hmm. And just the people around you get what they want, but you, you are the doormat. But a lot of times that's where children, especially when they're younger, that's where they are. Younger kids and even teenagers uh, have a difficult time expressing themselves and just hope that someone will know what they want or meet or need. And so it's this, this passive method of communication, not effective. The next, though, is kind of the flip side of that. That's aggressive, where it's very clear what you want. You, and matter of fact, it's kind of overkill. It's my way or the highway. This is what I want and this is going to happen. And no matter what anybody else says, this is how it's going to go yeah, down. And you, you know? can use threats. You can use physical violence. Um, these are people who yell, throw things, break things, intimidate other people. Demanding. Uh, demand, demean, call names, uh, use uh, threatening language. It's a very aggressive way where where you're being very direct. Everybody knows what it is you want. It's very clear. 100% mm -hmm. everybody knows what you want, but you're not giving anybody else any other choices there's no choice to say no to you you're you're going to make sure it what you are going to get what you want so think of this as kind of like the, the the image that comes to my mind is the jerk boss yelling in the 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 room at all the employees of how this needs to happen and this is what's going to happen like that's the that's the image that conjures up in my mind is this this guy or demanding or a prison guard or, or a, you great. know something like that where where it's it you will do this or else yeah but the nice thing is you at least know what that person yeah there's wants. no there's no confusion and so so at least that's out on the table there's there's no guessing game as to what the person wants but do they respect the other people do they ask for any input do they give anybody else any options what type of relationships do they have yeah and and they'd have to be surrounded by people who were passive i guess at least though again the, the positives are at least you know what they want yeah so there's no guessing which leads into the third method of communication which is uh, I guess technically it's called passive aggressive, but people don't normally know what that means. Passive aggressive is the same as manipulative. Yeah. Where you're passively being aggressive. Yeah. So it doesn't mean I've heard this where people are, oh, you're passive one moment, then aggressive the next. No, that's not what that means. It's 
passive aggressive is not the same as flip flopping. So, so what passive aggressive is is it is indirect where you don't ask for the thing that you want. People don't know what you you want. You actually keep that hidden. And the reason you keep that hidden is because you don't want to give the other person choices and options. And so you'll present them either lies or false information or, or put them on an emotional guilt trip or do something else to get them to do what you want without actually asking them directly, hey, can I have this? So it's it's like um, the aggressive or except will you indirect. do this? Yeah. yeah, it's oh, I need you to go do this and this and this, but it, that's not the real reason. There's a, a, a different reason for well, no, why the the coach that told the kids, oh, she lied to the kids about gum not digesting to get them to do what she wanted instead of just being straightforward and saying, hey, I don't want you guys spitting gum on the ground because I got to clean it up. Instead, she concocted this lie of, oh, if, to scare if, them if you swallow it. it, it won't digest and you'll grow trees out of your belly and die in your sleep, like that sort of thing, where you're like, um, no, it would have been better if she had just told them straightforward, I don't like cleaning up after you guys. If I find that you spit out your gum or that you have gum, you're going to be with me cleaning up. That would have been a better approach. Mm-hmm. Instead, what she did was the definition of manipulation. She withheld information or presented false information in an attempt to to coerce or, or control an outcome that she wanted without being direct. So, yeah. um, but that's passive aggressive. This is manipulation. It's dishonest. It's controlling. It's removing choices from other people. Mm-hmm. It's playing games. It's guilt trips. It's hidden agendas and hidden motives, like all of that stuff. That's what manipulation is. And that's, now. so far, all of these aren't ideal. Yeah. I think aggressive is slightly better, but not really. Passive is horrible, pretty much all the way around. And passive aggressive or manipulative, really, these are not good none methods of, of communication. None of these are, will lead to satisfying, healthy relationships. So, but the fourth method will, and that's being assertive. Where, and I, um, Anna, I really when, liked how you applied this though. When you, because I remember you taking this course. Yeah. And you, it was so cool because you came back and you're like, you know what? I have not been clear as to things that I want and how I want it and blah, blah, blah. This is what I would like to see happen. It, you weren't demanding. You weren't angry. But you were very clear about it's what so you wanted. empowering. Fontaine, I noticed, and I, I'm just going to make this up because I can't remember. But Fontaine, for example, you would say, I noticed that I'm the only one that changes the baby's diapers. I'm, quite frankly, I, I'm tired at the end of the day, just like you are. Would you help me? We take turns changing baby's diapers, where it was very clear what you wanted. So when you are being assertive, you're honest, Mm. you're direct. Yes. You express how you're feeling, you express how you're thinking, and you, you actually express the real emotions. You don't make up emotions and say, I'm angry when you're not angry. You don't say I'm sad when you're not sad. You say how you really are feeling and you say what you really are thinking and you ask for what you really want and you give the other person a choice and and you respect that decision. No, 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 that's not. Okay. I want to be very clear though. That's not to say that you, you don't attach consequences for the wrong choice. And you can do that, especially when you're raising kids or running a business or having a basketball team or or whatever it may be. You give the people over whom you have jurisdiction, you give them choices, but then you also attach consequences. And that's that's a separate topic. We're going to cover that in our our next podcast. Mm -hmm. But the idea is you're not limiting choices. As a matter of fact, when you're being assertive, more often than not, you're giving more options and more choices, but everything's out in the open. And the Mm -hmm. the key to being assertive is being honest. Yeah. And even when I say you express how you're feeling and you express how you're thinking, when I took this course on assertiveness, they described the importance of separating out the two. Feelings and thinking are are, are not the same thing. For example, sometimes people will say what they think, but say they feel that way as they're describing what they want or what they think. I once had a roommate who I, I we were t- talking about how to like turn down dates that we 
we didn't like or, you know, or things we didn't want. And she's just say, she said, oh, just start everything with I feel. I feel this like way. Like you're ugly? I feel like you're <laughs> ugly. I feel like well, where, where it was actually what she thought. But she says, if you start it with I feel, they can't argue with you. Because you can't argue with a person's feelings. Well, I guess technically that's true. And she's true, that which was true. But what she was saying was what she was thinking. And that's actually, in the assertiveness course I took, that is actually a way of manipulating. Hmm. Is by calling things feelings that aren't feelings. Huh. Um, okay. Because, but, but at the core, because you can't argue with my feelings. Right. So it, basically it was her way of taking the taking choice. A, taking away choice. Taking a, uh, not taking responsibility for her own thoughts and, 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 you know, admitting what her thoughts were or whatever and not taking responsibility for things is manipulative mm-hmm. and not allowing the other person choices. Right. Like trying to control their reactions or their, you know, what they do. All of a sudden, as soon as you try to control the other person, as opposed to giving them choices... It becomes manipulative, as, but but if you have to plot and plan what you're going to say to get another person to feel or do something, you're probably manipulating. <laughs> that's a good. Instead, that's a good just rule focus. Of thumb. If you're focusing on what really is, like, gosh, I feel frustrated. Well, no, we teach our kids that, I, though, Hannah. We tell them to express yourself. Yeah, I'm getting angry. I feel frustrated. I feel abandoned. I feel rejected. I feel upset. Like we we actually teach our kids to do that but they don't need to be saying i feel well i feel, I feel like you need to give that to me <laughs> i feel like i should get your ice cream yeah no nope. I, I feel like you're being a jerk um okay okay so nope you, that's not you, a feeling you've, you've crossed the line i feel upset yeah i feel angry at you but I feel that you're being a jerk. <laughs> it's not true. It's not a feeling. So assertive, <laughs> the core of assertiveness, though, Hannah. Is, I think is, you're being a jerk. <laughs> yeah, the core of assertiveness is that idea of honesty. Yeah. But also the, the mutual respect and choices. So that that's where... And, and, that's and, all, and asking for what you want. Well, that's honesty. And, but yeah. that is honesty. Well, well, and you think about it, it's really easy for kids to become manipulative when they're little. And the reason why is when you have a little baby, a baby can't talk. They're not able, they're not capable of asking for what they want. They have to cry every time they want something. And so... Well, but, no, ba- basically they are in that first method of passive where... Kind of, They're where kind you kind of have to guess what they want. Yeah, and and women, they have that ability. Women love to guess what other people are feeling and what their motives are, and it's just. But the reason why women have this ability and this interest is, you know, it's how you care for babies. You have to guess all the time what they are actually feeling and uh, why it is you they're say, crying. Anna, you say and babies, but I'm thinking babies all the way up until about age 18. Yeah, okay, stop. <laughs> anyway. No, but you, um, okay, you have to guess what teenagers are yeah, thinking Yeah, what's or actually going on here? Anyway, so part of your job as the parent is when your child does start to understand words and can verbalize things. Uh, when they want things, you have to say, oh, you don't cry for it. You need to ask for what you want. And that's where I guess the training should start. Instead yeah. of going, oh, you're crying. Do you want an ice cream? Uh, wait, no, you're old enough to talk. Knock it off. You need to start asking yeah, for what you you're want. You're 12. I uh, know. <laughs> because otherwise, you start training them to be manipulative. I, um, I'm, I'm half joking, so, Hannah. We all know kids like that oh. who are 12, 13, who whine. Until they, until somebody guesses what they want, or mopes, oh, or yeah, 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 and so yeah, you know, okay, you know what I'm talking about. You, you see kids, and they're not babies, but they'll whine or they'll mope or blubber. Now here's the thing about that, Hannah, and wait till somebody guesses what it is they want. That actually it's, undermines confidence, and we've talked about that. The key to, to self esteem is is doing and acting in a way that you know you can and should. And when a kid reverts to being a baby or having baby-like behavior, it undermines their their confidence and, and undermines their self-esteem. It's not healthy for them. Yeah. It's not a good thing for to encourage kids to have 
passive or aggressive or manipulative behavior. They, you actually want everybody in the family to be assertive. Yeah. And that, that okay. So anyway, all and that I, aside, I wish I had done a better job teaching this to my kids. You know when, what? Though it's, like, it's not too late. It's not too late. It's just I didn't realize that I needed to teach that to my kids starting out. I'm teaching it to my younger kids now, and it's making a huge difference. Where, where I'm like, oh yeah, they can learn this at a young age. Not they only can, can they, learn, they should. But they should. Yeah. I wish I had done that for. Well, my it makes older them feel kids. better about themselves. Yeah. But it also makes better communication in the home in general. Mm-hmm. It's hilarious. You got an eight-year-old and a six-year-old discussing their feelings and going, "Well, the way you did, the way, the way you threw that dirt clod, it almost hit me. It made me very excited and upset. I don't want you to do that anymore." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, but, okay. But I mean, how many times have you walked in and you're like, somebody's like making noises or doing something to try to get me to give them something, and you're like. You didn't just respond to that, did you? And I'm like, oh my goodness. Hannah, no, that, that has you ne- need to ask for what you want, buddy. You know That has never happened. Oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But- so having said that, those those are the four different methods of communication. Four basically four ways of getting what you want, or at least trying to. Passive, aggressive, manipulative, and assertive. And we say that being assertive is the best. Well, let's apply that here. Okay. To- we, this is I, I think this is the best way to understand them is to apply them. So let's take a situation where you want something. And so you're going to try the four different forms of communication to get what you want. So the, the and- scenario you came up with, I thought this was good, is that the wife wants the husband to help her with the dishes. Yes. So first, so, the first so, method of communication, the first one is passive. Passive. What do, what do you got? Okay. So wife's home. She's doing the dishes in the kitchen. Husband walks in the door and he's like, hi, honey, I'm home. Hi, sweetheart. How was your day? Oh, it's great. I'm going to go watch TV. Okay. And she does the dishes for the next hour and feels sorry for herself and frustrated that he's in the other room watching TV. And she had, like, let's say she had to go to work too. And she's wondering, gosh, how could he be so insensitive? But, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to hurt his feelings. I don't want to create waves. I'll just do it. Mm -hmm. But, uh, So she's upset. Does he know? He doesn't even know. He has no clue. Now, he may he may have no intention of ever doing the dishes and doesn't want to. Or he may be a great guy and be like, oh, yeah, I'll help you with the dishes. But, but either way. He was never given the choice. He was never, she never. Well, and here's the, here's the mentality, though. He should know better. He should know. Well, maybe he does and maybe he doesn't. I've heard plenty of comedians say, hey, what, this is what guys got going on in their head. There's nothing going on. Like we got to be told everything. I don't believe that, but to a degree, it's we have other things on our minds, and helping out with the dishes may not be one of them. He may be in the garage tinkering on his car because he can't get it fixed. Like he's got other things to do, and it didn't even cross his mind. And his wife's always doing the dishes. What like, and she's never said boo, so he figures eh, maybe she likes it. I don't know. It did, it just really had the, they've never broached the subject. So, so it's not fair to be mad at him yeah. because you never asked. So, so that, that's uh, communication method number one. Communication. So now let's say she's, she, let, she changes things up and she goes, oh, I'm going to be aggressive. Okay. So same situation. Wife wants the husband wife's, to do the dishes. Wife's in the kitchen, and the dirty dishes. In walks the in walks the husband. Hey, honey, I'm home from whoa! All of a sudden, she's throwing dishes at him. Get your bum here in the kitchen, you lazy, worthless. You know, brass well, and fracking. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember the last time you did the dishes. Get in here or you're sleeping on the couch, buddy. On the couch. <laughs> you better be checking your meal for needles from now on. Yeah. Uh, that's a little frightening, you know. 
Yeah. She could be mm. slamming doors and or, yelling. Or screaming, and yelling. Screaming. Ch- chucking di- I like chucking dishes at yeah, That's great. Yeah, or breaking the dishes, throwing them down. Say, you know what? You're not going to wash oh, them all, you know break what? them. But that's another <laughs> That's another method. Yep, is exactly. She could just be like, I'm just smash all the dishes right in front of them and say, you clean that up. I'm tired of doing the dishes. You never help, blah, blah, blah. I want you to do something. Yeah. I mean, there, I guess the nice thing is there's no confusion as to what she wants. Yeah. <laughs> At the same time, how to how to healthy of a relationship is that? Yeah, I mean, if is you were that a, if you were that husband, you'd probably just uh, walk right back out the door. Well, you'd probably like, go buy some I chocolates don't... and flowers and figure, oh well, it's just you know a woman thing. <laughs> Where <laughs> you'd be like, uh, no. Well, no, because that's what you'd have to think about. Oh, I've I've read about uh, women go crazy. Blah blah blah. Well, yeah, you'd think something was wrong with her. Yeah. Okay, so that's aggressive, name calling, throwing things, yeah, it, shouting, it, yelling, the nice demanding. Thing, the nice thing is, it's clear what you want, but the bad thing is, the relationship suffers, and so do the dishes. Yeah. So moving on to number three, which would be the the third method of communication, which would which be which is my favorite, manipulative. Okay, here we go. Wife's in the kitchen. Husband walks in the door. Hi, honey. I'm home. Honey. Honey. <laughs> What's wrong? <gasps> Nothing. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to laugh. <laughs> You're doing a great job acting. Well, 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 well something's wrong. What, what, what happened? <sighs> nothing. It's, it's, it's nothing. I just, I just don't think you love me anymore. <laughs> why would, why would you think that? What, 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 did, did I say something? I, I mean, oh, oh, uh, no, I, I love you. Here, 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 here. Uh, let me, um, here, you go lay down. Uh, why, why don't I, I call out dinner or here, let me vacuum up and clean up in here. And, and, oh, no, that's not it. And finally, he's cleaning the whole house and, and, and he finally gets to the dishes and she won't talk to him. It's like, what's wrong? What did I do? What did I do? And, and he's buying her flowers and, and chocolates again. And he's buying again. her flowers <laughs> and chocolate. And finally she talks to him again after a week. And yeah. What the heck? He still doesn't know what happened. He still doesn't know what happened. And he happened. walks away going, oh, she's having a rough patch or she's nuts or I, I don't know. Like, I, he, so he's playing the guessing game now. He's like, man. Yeah. But I, she got what she wanted. Is my wife okay? He's worried about her now. Yeah. And, but he still doesn't know what she wanted. Yeah, he still doesn't know. He he, because he also vacuumed and did all the laundry and washed the car and bought her flowers and well, no, but even but even gave said, her a back you, rub. What, and, you want you want me to do the dishes? No, no. You want me to vacuum? No, no. You want me to give you a massage? Uh, uh, wash your feet? Uh, uh, order out? Like what? What do you want? Nothing. Like he he doesn't know, and and he's even asked her point blank. And she's refusing to tell him. That's that's manipulation. That's manipulation. Because was it honest? No. <laughs> did she ask what she wanted? Did she give him choices? Did she re- no. did she respect him? There's no respect there. No. He's he's a person to be manipulated. He's he's a lump of clay that she needs to mold how she wants. I, I even hear sometimes women bragging about doing this very thing. To get what they want. It's very unhealthy. Yeah, it's not it, it's it, not it's a act, good it, thing. It's actually a sickness and it's not okay. Yeah, and it's it's basically the other person has to walk on eggshells guessing what it is you really want. Not healthy. Not good. Yeah. So let's move on to the fourth <coughs> method of communication being now the, the wife wants the husband to help with the dishes. This time she's going to be assertive. Okay. Wife's in the kitchen, husband walks through the door. Hi honey, I'm home. Oh, hi, honey. How was your day? Oh, it was good. Blah, blah, blah. Um, hey, look, honey, I'm feeling a little overwhelmed. I, and, and I'm quite frankly, I'm exhausted. And I, 
I've been doing the dishes all week and I realized I, I, that's bothering me. Like I, I want, I want, I was wondering if like, I think we should take turns and, or do it together. Would you be willing to like spend 20 minutes, just help me clean up the kitchen and then we can both go relax and watch TV. Would you be willing to do that? Yeah, sure, dear. Okay, awesome. Okay, so she told them how she was feeling and what she was thinking and what she was wanted, and she asked for what she wanted and gave him a choice. Yeah. That's it. It's That's it's, assertive. Maybe that's why nobody does it. It's very boring. It's very boring. There's there, no, there drama. no drama, no heightened emotions, nothing to film here. No, no broken dishes, oh, no holes yeah, in walls. Very boring. Yeah. Very boring. Why didn't we like? <laughs> <laughs> we love. We could have. We could have used a more boring relationship. Are you kidding? We do do this, Hannah. Could you imagine if we? No, in our that early way? marriage, oh. before we knew about like oh, how well, to not be. <laughs> well, now we we it. use that, and we still have plenty of drama. We don't. Uh, that's one one uh, bit of drama we don't need. Yeah. Anyway, but but there's nothing wrong with feeling a certain way and explaining what you're thinking. And asking another person for what you want. It's very respectful. And it's respectful to you. And it's respectful to the other person. And you're giving the other person the choice to do the right thing. And so then you don't even have to get mad because like, oh, if they choose the right thing, like there is no issue. Yeah. But if you never present it to them, then that's on you. It, it really is. Yeah. And, and, and then uh, how stressful is it? when you have to like guess what people want. I realized that when we would have Thanksgiving with with family every year, and I would always feel so awkward going to family's house, um, a, a particular family member's house, and I because I wasn't sure what they wanted me to do. And so I couldn't like relax and sit on the couch and watch TV. Well, no, it's not your home. So you don't know where things are. You're not the one throwing or hosting. Yeah, I don't want to get in the way. I don't want to step on toes. But, you know, and you say, hey, can I help out? Oh, no, you just relax. I can't. I can't. (laughs) But you can't relax because you're like, wait, this person always says that. But I know they're actually expecting me to help out. But I have to figure out what it is they want me to do. And they're thinking, well, you know, if you had any sense in your head, you'd be doing this, 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 and this. But I don't know what it is they have. They're thinking Mm -hmm. what's in their mind. And so I'm there. I can't relax and enjoy the time because I'm like, okay, what what is it I'm supposed to be doing? Or am I doing something wrong? Am I doing something right? I, I... if I if I knew that they were good at communicating, I could relax. Like if I knew they were straightforward and just communicated when they wanted stuff, I could relax around them. Anyway, so I realizing that one year I got to host Thanksgiving at my house and I planned out the menu. And not only did I plan out the menu, I divided it up so that when all the guests got there, I'm like, okay, so here's how it's going to be. I have different assignments for everybody. I have, okay, you're going to be in charge of the cranberry sauce. Here's the recipes and the ingredients, you know, and I'll be in here if you have any questions. And I'd like you to help out with this, you to help out with this. Everybody had their assignments Mm -hmm. and it was the most relaxing Thanksgiving. Everybody felt so relaxed because they knew exactly what I needed, the help that I needed. I asked for the help. There wasn't any, everybody had their own assignments. No unspoken expectations. There were no unspoken expectations. And it was incredible. Everybody was able to relax. And to this day, they were like, oh, that was one of the best Thanksgivings. And But that was the secret, was, it was letting people know what you wanted made it so they could actually relax. They weren't having to guess, play mm. a guessing game. Anyway, so that's one of the beauties of of asking for what you want and being direct is it helps people be able to relax around you because they're not having to guess what it is that you want or need yeah. or how they can help. So we were going to do another <laughs> we were going to do another example of how, you know, maybe a, a parent doesn't want their son to date a specific girl, but you can just kind of imagine we go through the different steps where a, a passive would be the parent doesn't say anything and just stews and gets upset. The other is uh, but never shows it. Uh, if they're being aggressive, 
they would yell and scream and take away the car keys and and, and call the girl names yeah, and, and, and their son names and, and, and come up with all sorts of of angry ways of showing how much they. If hate I the, see you with that girl again. This is what's gonna, you know. Or they follow behind them on their wherever they're going and honk their horn and harass them when they go to the restaurant together. Whatever, you know. If they're being uh, manipulative, you know, they'll come up with, oh, you know, I heard that she's got STDs. You may want to stay away. Or, she's got herpes, or her parents are druggies, or what, you know, or she, her family's part of the mafia. Trying to, you know, some sort of. Is me- your girlfriend mentally retarded? Are you <laughs> sure she's not? Because she doesn't seem like the brightest bull. And this is where uh, bu- <laughs> this is where bullying, or or even. Um, gossip or social media manipulation cyberbullying could come into play you know and it, yeah. it's it's really bad and then of course the assertive would be hey billy just be direct say hey i'm actually worried i know she drinks i know you know th- or you know she has these different beliefs or standards and i i think and i know she's you're not planning on going support, to college I, and- she's not going to support you in these goals mm-hmm. and so who your friends are and who you choose that's that's the path you're going to go, especially your boyfriends and girlfriends, you know, are going to have a huge impact on you. So I don't, I'm, I'm not, you know, yeah. supporting this relationship. But it's, just being straightforward. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and you can, and here's the thing, now, you can attach consequences if he continues yeah. to go out with her. And we'll talk about that. But I just yeah, I'd say, yeah, being I mean, straightforward. I can't stop you from dating them, but I'm not going to support you in this because. Yeah. And there will be, unfortunately, there um, are going to be some negative consequences if you continue. Yeah. and it's, Or especially if, hey, if you come back home with her past 11 o'clock or midnight. You lose access to the car. You're going to lose access to the car. Yeah. I'm not going to, that's where I stand on this. And that's why. Anyway, so um, I, I think that just the idea is there are all these different, the, these four methods of communication, and you need to choose which one you're going to use. We think being assertive is the best because it doesn't damage the relationship and it keeps the lines of communication open, uh, but it also, it, it does not undermine your self-confidence. Okay. Yeah, and, and it's hard, and I'm saying this, it's it's hard, like especially if there's a, a stressful situation, it's hard to stay in the assertive communication realm. It's it's the ideal, but I mean, I've I've totally goofed on some of this. Well, sometimes. okay, between you and me, Hannah. If I'm stressed I, out, I tend to go back to manipulating. And when I'm stressed <laughs> out, I tend to go towards aggressive because that's uh-huh. my default. Yeah, yeah. I, so, I bounce between I mean, so assertive don't, and aggressive. Don't don't beat yourself up over it, but the goal is to try to be more assertive when you can, and yeah. to um, and and think of you know when you come into you know stressful situations and where you need to express what you want. Think of it as a practice round. Yeah. You know, go, well, okay, well, that practice round didn't go so well. But I did well. better than last time. Yeah, I did not yeah, throw yeah. as many dishes. <laughs> I eventually remembered to ask for what I wanted, you know. So but uh, It's a process. <laughs> yeah. So, so. I, I feel, know. though, Anna, I am a lot, no, I think I'm a lot farther along than I used to be. Uh, oh, like, yeah. But so. Same, same. But um, it's, a, it's a conscious decision. I catch myself a lot quicker now when hmm. I'm going down the wrong. Actually, now my kids catch me, too. Yeah, you got a <laughs> little support group there. So, Mom, you need to ask for what you want. <laughs> so how does this apply to money pants? Well, here's the thing. With money pants, or and I guess this holds true no matter what system you're using in your home, but we're just going to focus on money pants because... Every parent wants certain things from your kids. Money pants is no different. We want our kids to develop work ethic and to develop their unique abilities, their superpowers is what we call them. We want our kids to develop that that work ethic that will help them the rest of their lives and we want them to learn money management, but we want them to develop all these amazing talents and abilities and skills before they leave home. That's what we want for our kids. Kids aren't, our kids aren't, entirely on board sometimes where they're like maybe maybe they don't know they want that or maybe they don't want that or they they think they don't want that and so there's the kind of this conflict but with money pants we encourage parents and kids to be straightforward honest and open we talk about well uh, yeah with money pants it's very you're not there's no hidden agenda it's very direct it's, it's very extremely straightforward extremely direct hey guys this is what i'd like and this it is what i want it couldn't be more clear here are your jobs Here's the detail of that job. Here are your habits. Here are the details of those habits. Here's how much you can earn. 
this is what's going to happen if you don't earn. Like, so, it's so really right, clear. Right off the bat, that cannot qualify as manipulation because manipulation is indirect. That's one of the, that's an essential part of the definition of manipulation is that you are being, if you are being indirect about what you want, not, not coming forward and saying, hey, this is what I want. Well, um, so, so money pants actually helps people become more assertive and become more direct because they actually have it written out. There's no assumptions. There's no, um, well, I thought you knew type right, of thing. Right. Um, no, it's very, very direct, very clear. No, no guesswork involved well, actually of eliminate, what the other person wants. And it eliminates fights and arguments and, and damaged relationships. Like it, because of how direct, open because and it, honest yeah, it is. Yeah, it's direct. And, it, but then also if you're using money pants, you are having a family counsel where you're not only saying, hey, this is what I want, but you're also you're discussing giving them, you're it. You're giving them your kids, <laughs> not just your kids, every family member, you're giving them an opportunity to voice concerns. And ideally, if they have a valid concern, you're going to change and it's going to make everything better. Like, again, and we keep saying yeah. this, we're a, the family is a team and you're all in it together and you're all trying to help each other to become your best selves. And that can only happen if everybody's straightforward, open, and honest. And if everybody's trying to bring the best out of each other. And that only happens when you're being assertive. If you have hidden agendas and hidden motives, or you're lying, or you're or you're not sharing what you think, then you're not contributing to the team. You're actually a detriment. Yeah. So, so for example, with Money Pants, we encourage you to listen to the podcasts with your children. And the reason why is because it's important for your children and your teens to know this is why we're doing money pants. Oh, no, and no, okay. this is how it's going. This is the the motive under underneath it is, hey, we want you to be successful. We want you to have all these skills. We want you to have this self-confidence and this work ethic and to be able to achieve anything you want to achieve. Well, one, um, one mother actually told us, she's like, she was having such a tough time getting her kids on board. She knew that money pants was right. And she, she really wanted to implement it, but her kids were giving her a lot of pushback. And she had them listen to the podcast. And one in particular, that uh, the, the 40 skills your kids need to have. And her kids listened to it and went, oh, wait, that's what we're trying to do? I see. Oh, oh okay. I get it, mom. Okay. Oh. oh, yeah. And all of a sudden. Uh, of course. All, Let's do all that. All of a sudden, all that pushback went away. And the mom was like, oh, well, this is brilliant. I'll just have my kids listen to the podcast. Well, it, And yeah, I actually yeah, think that's a great idea. And we've had our kids <laughs> listen to the podcast. The, the nice thing is, because you and Hannah, we, well, no, we even talk about us, it. But even us, they, because we talk about it so much, because we have to plan the podcast and we, you know, programming the app and everything. We talk about it a lot. So we assumed that our kids understood what what we were doing of course mm-hmm. we're the makers of money pants but we found when we went on a trip when we were playing the podcast in the car to to listen to it to see how it sounded our kids were like mom and dad you oh, have really squeaky voices no <laughs> no <laughs> anyway are you guys no. are you guys sped up some of our kids even our older kids were like oh so that's why we do that and I was like, oh, Fail. gosh, okay. So my own kids need to listen to this because I haven't maybe taken the time to explain it to each each one. Yeah. Anyway, but the point is when you're manipulating people, you have hidden agendas. Now, if our podcast was, hey, try these tricks um, on your uh, kids. I hate that. Um, I, Hannah, uh, we're I gonna, hate that. We're going we're gonna to tell you 10 tricks that'll make your kids do what you want and they won't know any better. But don't let your kids hear this, okay? Don't don't keep this podcast a secret from them. You know, otherwise this trick won't work. That would be manipulation. But instead, it's no, have your kids listen to it because if they understand what you're trying to accomplish and the motive underneath it, they're going to be more supportive because it's more, there's a, a high likelihood that they're going to be like, oh, yeah, actually, I want that too. We're on the same page. Wow. And so, once again, Money Pants is not about manipulation. Manipulation. You don't tell people what it is you want, and you have these hidden motives and hidden agendas where you're actually trying to do something else. It's a trick. You're trying to trick them into doing what you want, 
by by withholding information or or or, or something misrepresenting information or something like that. That is not money pants. And that's just it. We want and we did that podcast never lie. And we talked about this at length where you you want your kids to question if the sun will come up, but not if mom and dad are speaking the truth. There should be more confidence in what mom and dad say than in whether or not the sun will rise in the morning. That's the level of honesty you want with your kids. And if you should go back and listen to that one because that one that's one of my favorite podcasts we've done, the, the Never Lie. And it for so many reasons, but th- this is just another example of that manipulation is a form of lying. And here's the here's the working definition, Hannah is it is, and you've kind of hit it pretty hard, but I just want to reiterate it. Manipulation is simply control through dishonest or disingenuous motives and methods. That that's all it is. It's mm-hmm. it's controlling other people through dishonest <clears throat> and disingenuous methods. That's what manipulation is, and it's bad. It's always bad. Manipulation is always bad. And I, it, it's hard. Some people, they, they, they justify it. And it may be part of their, their routine. It may be part of their upbringing. It may be part of how they do things now. But if that's the case, it's a great time to start being a little more assertive. Yeah. And it's not too late to start. And I still, I still work on this on a regular basis to be straightforward, honest. And, okay. And I, I'm going to do a little Bible quoting here. Jesus said, let your communication be yay, yay, yay. Nay, nay. And a lot of people don't know what that means. I'll just break it down. Yes means yes. No means no. He's like, make your communication straightforward. There's no confusion. That's all he's, that's all he's saying is just yes means yes. Just be honest and straightforward. No means no. And be honest, straightforward don't in play your games. communication. Yep. Don't play games. Yes means yes. No means no. And don't lie. So... The second part of manipulation is that it's controlling. So it's indirect kind of dishonest and indirect Mm -hmm. ulterior motives and with the intent to control the other person, take away their choices. And so uh, as I already explained, money pants is very straightforward. There's no hidden agenda. Uh, It's, it's very much out there. This is what it's trying to do. This is why this is how it's, it's out there. And the more everybody knows about it, the better. Mm -hmm. But then is it controlling well, when you're assertive, you give people choices. You ask for what you want, and they have the choice whether or not to do it. With money pants, your kids still have the choice. If you say, hey, your your responsibility in this family is to clean uh, the dining room every evening. They still have the choice not to. You're not going to beat them if they don't. You're not going to throw something at them if they don't. You're not going to call them names or belittle them if they don't. They have the choice not to. Now, if they choose not to, they will have to hire somebody else to do it. There's a consequence. But, but, it's, but it's respectful. But agreed it's up, respectful. Agreed upon ahead of it's time. agreed upon ahead of time. And just because there are consequences doesn't is not the same as controlling somebody else. Hmm. So, and we're going to so, talk about and that. And we will talk about that, but that is not controlling someone else. Saying, hey, it, it, it would be like uh, McDonald's saying, hey, if you work for us, we'll pay you $12 an hour. If you come in, oh, that's so controlling. How's that controlling? How's that controlling? If you come in, and, and if you don't, you're not going to get paid. Oh, that's controlling too. That's controlling too. No, having consequences for your actions is not controlling. We it's both just, agreed on these. Yeah. Uh, it's a mutually uh, a beneficial agreement Yeah. for both people. And there's no control involved. It's simply you both agreed on a set of consequences, both positive and negative. That, that's all it is. Yeah. And, and so, so, but then to take it a step further, yes, you assign out jobs. Yes, you talk about it ahead of time, but everybody has their responsibility. But as far as like the habits on money pants, the thing is, is those are habits you're child picks out, (laughs) your teen picks out, or your husband or wife picks out, those are very much their choices. If they don't like the things on there, they should change them to be something that they want to accomplish, that they want to see themselves accomplishing. And so it's, it's a, hey, look, you write down the things that you want to accomplish, and I'll support you in that. And I'll you know, set up some things to help you accomplish what you want to accomplish. This is in no way manipulative. So going back to what that mom blogger said, where 
offering rewards and giving rewards to your children as manipulation. A manipulative tactic it's to not. control if your you, kids. If you think offering no, kids re- if you think offering kids rewards for making good choices is manipulative, you don't understand what manipulation is. Yeah. And so now back to that other story where uh, we had the relative who's uh, where I said to to her I said, "Hey, if you go forward with faith and you go and try to get this medical help, God is going to open doors for you. And the person was like, oh my goodness, that is so manipulative. You cannot use that as a reason for me to go do this. That is so manipulative. Well, I thought it caught me off guard when the person said that, but I thought about it because the reason it caught me off guard is because when they said that, I realized, wait a minute, that could be manipulative. That could be a manipulative tactic. If I was just saying that to get them to do what I wanted, oh God, you know, God trumps everything. So you can't have any well, reason. You can't, ar- yeah, you can't argue. You can't argue against God. So you have to do this. Um, Unfortunately, that could, Hannah, some that, people, that does happen. Some people do use that as manipulation of, oh, I'm going to trump whatever you say by saying God. But I'm only saying that because I want to get what I, I want you to do what I want you to do. But I realized that when I said that, I said it because I honestly believed that God would open doors. And it wasn't a manipulative tactic. Yes, I did want this person to go get medical help, but I honestly believed that God would open doors and and that was my belief and it was an honest and i was actually being honest and straightforward about what i actually thought well and that answers i think you just answered one of the questions <clears throat> we posed at the beginning and that is how to detect manipulation it boils down to your motives and your methods are you trying to control another person through through lying or some sort of deceptive method and you weren't Therefore, you are not guilty, and you are saying exactly what you wanted. You're not guilty of manipulation. But on the flip side, how can you determine if you're being manipulated? And it's really easy. If you find that you have limited, more and more limited choices or no choice, you're probably being manipulated because there is always another choice. There's always another option. You may not know it. It may, not, it may not be readily available or readily apparent, but there's always another option. So that's, that's one of those keys where you can tell if, you're, if someone's trying to manipulate you, they will try to pigeonhole you or get you or squeeze you into a corner where you think there's no other choice. That's a way to detect if you're being manipulated, where you feel like you have to do something and you don't have options. That's a good key to determining if you're being manipulated. Well, one one other thing is when whenever you're making a decision about something, like say say you're trying to make a decision, a lot of times if it's a, a big decision, an important decision, I will make a list of pros and cons. Yep. I'll make a list of all the reasons I should do something and all the reasons I shouldn't do it. That's not manipulation. That's me trying to make a decision and looking at the choices and what the consequences would be or could be for uh, one choice or the other. Okay. And so when you're trying to convince somebody to do something, you, you might say, hey, look here, here's a reason. Here's another reason. Here's another reason you should. Here's another reason you should. Here's another reason you should. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with pointing out to another presenting person. Presenting all the reasons and presenting, for a decision. Hey, you yeah. may, you may, you're making this decision, but you may not have thought of this. And you may not have thought of this. And you may not have thought of this, 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 and this. That is convincing another person. That's not manipulating them. Manipulating is where you withhold information, information or lie about something mm-hmm. or, or fake an emotion or reject them or give them the silent treatment or do something else to try to control them that's with the intent to change their decision. It's control through um, deception. But there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with being straightforward and saying, hey, you're making this decision and the way I see it, there's these these pros mm-hmm. or cons that maybe you haven't considered. And this is what I think you should do. And, well, um, but here are the consequences. Um, that's part of their decision-making process is looking at what the consequences might be. And, and that's just it. Money pants 
is the antithesis of manipulation. It, like we said, it couldn't be more clear. But also, kids have so they have so many choices. They have so many things. They have these. Okay, we have family council. You discuss jobs, how the jobs get done, when the jobs get done. Uh, they're developing their work ethic, and then they have these ten habits. With, with all these different, I mean, there are so many well, different and then options you, you that they can. You have consequences laid out, both rewards and uh, like mm-hmm. fees or restrictions that, that are laid out and decided ahead of time. So when they go to make decisions, mm-hmm. they can actually make a better They can weigh and the informed. pros and cons. They yep. can weigh the pros and cons and make informed decisions. Okay. And it's, it's a- so, it actually helps you become more assertive and more calm as you deal with with problems and also asking for what you want from your family members. But the kids, I've actually seen this, where they will stop and think about what they're doing too. Is this worth paying a dollar in a fee? Is this worth it to me? Or they'll catch themselves getting in a fight and go, wait, whoop, never mind. I don't want to go there. It's really cool because they know the, the more knowledge, knowledge is freedom. The more they know, the more their, their options are available, the more clear the consequences are, the more informed decision they can make. And that's what we're all about. Yeah. And, and we're all about giving the kids options. I mean, we've said, you know, they have more options about what clothes to buy or sports to play or towns to develop. Like, it, it's all about options. Yeah. Now, our next podcast is going to be about control. Because it, we're, t- we're talking about how there are elements of control. And so we're, g- we're going to talk about that in a future podcast, how that relates to parents and children. Because we don't believe that children should make all, all the decisions and should be allowed d- uh, that parents do yeah, need it- to, uh, to be in control. So, so when you're dealing with children uh, and saying, oh, that you shouldn't control your children, we actually disagree with that. There are times, absolutely, you should be controlling your, your children. And so what we're talking about is, is, has always been making choices within boundaries, but we still believe in having those boundaries. It, it's, we, it's part of the whole format is that there are boundaries in place. So, And, and um, we're going to talk about that and, because we're going to talk about natural and logical consequences. Yeah. And those have to be set up. Because that's how kids make decisions. Yeah. And so, so yeah, it's definitely not a free-for-all, and nor should it be. Anyway, but today we were just specifically addressing manipulation. And I hope that if you've been listening to this, uh, all of a sudden you're like, okay, I get what manipulation is. I get what qualifies as manipulation. But not only do I know what qualifies as manipulation, but I know what to replace that with, what the proper... A form of communication, the proper way to get what, nope. uh, go about getting uh, and asking for what I want. Now, what do you do though if you find yourself getting manipulated? Like you detect, you're like, oh, that's a manipulative tactic. What do you do? What do I do? I say, I hate that person. <laughs> exactly. And I will- hate being manipulated. No, a lot of and times, you, drive away. you know, quite honestly, um, Sometimes like I'll, I'll be in a frustrating situation with people like outside the family and later I'll go like, they were manipulating me. Oh my goodness. And I'll realize it later. And so usually because I'm so slow at recognizing manipulation, I don't deal with it. Um, it's hard right Hannah, because manipula- okay, manipulation is really, <clears throat> it, it's, it's hard to detect, especially when it's like people who are really good at it. Because they're really good at it. And so here's the key. And I said this before. If you find yourself feeling like you have fewer and fewer options and less and less freedom, you're probably being manipulated. Well, here's the problem is sometimes sometimes very good people with good intentions manipulate where they're trying to get you or someone else to do something that they believe is correct. It may even be correct. And it may even be correct, but how they're going about it is is manipulative. Mm-hmm. And we're like, hey, just just give me choices. Give me the respect of being honest with me and giving me choices and let me make the right choice. Give me the dignity. You don't need to make the right choice for me. Right. And so I have a friend who is a really nice lady, just awesome lady, and she has adult children. And a lot of times she withholds information, though, from them or gives them incorrect information because she wants them to make 
better choices. And she, and her kids get really mad at her. And she's like, I, I oh, you know, because they'll find out what she's doing or, or why she what she's saying isn't quite correct or whatever. And they'll get so frustrated and she doesn't understand it. She doesn't get it. Cause she's like, I'm, I'm doing the right thing. And I'm a, I'm, I'm making, trying sure, I'm making to, sure they're doing the right I, thing. I'm and... trying to help them do the right thing. But the, the frustration from her kids is let me, let me give me the opportunity to make the right choice. Right. And let me make the choice. And so by the time, you know, you have adult children, I guess it's time to start letting them. But it goes, it does boil down, and this is going to sound harsh, but it does boil down to being honest. And yeah. you got you got to be honest. And even if you think what you're doing is right or good, if you're going about it using dishonesty, then it's not. Then it's not. And that's so hard because sometimes yep. I've, I've found myself justifying manipulation because I'm like, yes, but they've got to make this decision and they've got to do this. And, and, uh, but it, it puts a strain on the relationship and your kids lose respect for you yep. and don't trust you in the future. And that's a huge and issue. If your kids yeah. don't trust you, then nothing, nothing else is going to You know, work. in fact, I'm thinking a couple times I have manipulated, I should probably go back and apologize so I can like start with a clean slate with some of those kids. So now that I'm thinking about it, I think maybe that's the best way to deal with it if you have manipulated is go, gosh, you know, I was manipulating you and that wasn't, that wasn't cool. I, 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 Sorry about that. Moving let me, on. Let me try it. Try it again. I'm, I'm trying to get better from that. So anyway, so, so now good, good, good we had this little talk. <laughs> so I guess to wrap it up, it's just you want your kids to learn work ethic and develop their potential. That's what every parent in a healthy relationship with their children wants for their kids. That's what every parent ideally wants for their kids is for them to be happy and successful in life. And that this is how you do it. And when it comes to expressing that and communicating that, you got four methods to do to do that. You got passive aggressive, manipulative, and assertive. And we hopefully have given a pretty good reason as to why you would want to use being assertive, but also how to avoid being manipulative, and also maybe even how to detect manipulation and what to do if you're being manipulated. Basically, it's simply I want these things, and here's why. And here are the options. And and when you're dealing with your kids, you say, and here are the consequences if you don't. And here are the consequences if you do. And it, and the kid goes, oh, that's fair. I agree. And there's no, you're not damaging the relationship. You're encouraging the behavior that you want. But the kid or the family member still has the choice and the freedom to make their choices. And it's really liberating. And it's very fun to watch because they actually, when the kids are the ones making the decisions and not you, making the decisions for them, they develop and grow. And it's really fun to watch. Now, I, I do have one complaint I have to add in here, is I I learned how to be assertive and how to be straightforward and whatever, but that doesn't necessarily mean that your kids will do that. Follow suit. What? Yeah, your just, kids don't turn out no, exactly no. how you want? Just because you teach a child like, hey, no, you need to ask for something this way and, and this way and that way. It doesn't mean that that's what they're going to do. You can only make that choice for yourself and you can teach your children, but it doesn't mean that your children will do that. That's still, that's a, whether or not you lie or tell the truth, that's your decision. Mm. And so just because you tell the truth doesn't mean that people in your family will and your children will, because I've run into situations where I, you know, I will, um, you know, expect my kids not to manipulate and to, you know, not to try these tactics or techniques to, to try to get what they want. And they know that it won't fly with me, but they, <laughs> they step outside the home and they find that, whoa, these other people, you can manipulate them. Yeah. You can, um, you know, make them feel sorry for you. Or you can do this and you can do that. And you can totally, these people are pushovers compared to mom or dad, yeah. you know. And so I have seen that. So and, we, we have to be careful we're not um, raising clever devils. Yeah. So so it goes back to that, you know, it, it's... Uh, it, 
it's very much a, a you can't stop another person from manipulating necessarily, but but I but it bothers me though when I, I think you have to be careful who your kids' teachers and coaches and things like that are because I found that one child in particular did only did well when they had a teacher who didn't put up with manipulation. We've said that before. Yeah. You can't be too careful who teaches your yeah, children. Yeah, where otherwise that kid would like <laughs> get away with get away with murder, <laughs> and, and so 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 that's that's one thing to watch out for is like if you, if you have different kids are different and will try different things and whatever. So it's you just have to be on your toes with some kids. <laughs> true so and, yeah. and that's it those are kind of all of our thoughts on manipulation and avoiding well detecting and avoiding manipulation if you like what you hear this podcast please tell your friends they may want to listen too and if you have a suggestion for a future podcast please go to our website under support and click contact us send us an email and we'll get right on it and that's it for today enjoy once again our mystery guest money pants composition we'll see you next time Yeah, I do.